Assalamu alaikum dear students, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to conduct a class for the students of class 19. The subject is biology and we are talking about the nephron from the chapter 8. What is nephron? In this picture we can see cluster of nephron. So what is nephron? If we try to know about the nephron generally, we can say that the functional unit and the secretory part of a uniferous tubule of kidney is nephron. So here is a new year that is uniferous tubule. What is uniferous tubule? Each kidney contains a particular type of tubules. These are uniferous tubules. Each uniferous tubules has two parts such as nephron and the collecting tubule. If we look at the picture, we can see this part is the nephron. And this part is the collecting tubules. Urine is produced in the nephron and the collecting tubules carry the urine to the pelvis which is led to the ureter. In this topic, we are going to learn about the structure and function of the nephron. <coughs> the word nephron is derived from the Greek word nephros meaning kidney. Each kidney contains one million nephron which perform very important part for the body as waste product like nitrogen based for expression, blood pressure reduction, pH balance maintaining, osmoregulation and several other functions. So on the starting of the structure of nephrons we have to know that each nephron is composed of renal corpuscle and renal tubules. We know that kidney has two important cross reasons, the outer one is cortex and the inner one is medulla. If we have a closer look at the nephron, we can see the part of nephron is present in the cortex and some part is present in the medulla. This is an important point to remember as it plays a significant role in the formation of urine. So here is two part, the renal corpuscle and renal tubule. If you see in this, in this picture, we can see the parts. This is the renal corpuscle part and this is the renal tubules part. Each renal corpuscle is divided into two parts. One is Bowman's capsule and another is glomerulus. So if we go to revise the class, we can say that the uniferous tubules have two parts. One is the nephron and another is the collecting tubule. The nephron has two parts. One is renal corpus, which is divided by two parts. One is Bowman's capsule and another is glomerulus. Here we can see a closer look of glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. This is the per renal carpuscle. At the one end of the tube wheel is folded and expanded into a cup-like structure which is known as Bowman's capsule. If you see, here is the cup-like structure. This is the Bowman's capsule. As the Bowman capsule is discovered by Sir William Bowman, the space inside the Bowman's capsule, the space inside the Bowman's capsule is known as Bowman's space. Bowman's capsule encloses a cluster of blood vessel that is known as glomerulus. So inside we can see a cluster of blood vessels surrounded by the Bowman's capsule. This is called glomerulus. This was about the details of renal corpus. So in the other end, in the other end, the renal tubules is present. Here we can see the nephron the collecting tubules 
and this is the renal tubules. The renal tubule is a long and folded tube-like structure that emerged from the Bowman's capsule and it ends into the duct system of the kidney. The tubule is divided into three main parts based on its function. As we can see in the next slide, the parts of the renal tubules. The first one is the proximal convoluted tubule. Then the loop of Henle or Henle's loop. And finally we have the distal convoluted tubule that is turned end into the collecting tubule. Now about the first part, proximal convoluted tubules, that is the first part of the renal tubules. Uh, as it is proximal because it is close to the Bowman's capsule and con convoluted meaning is a highly folded structure that helps in increase the overall length of the tubule in a small space. The proximal tubule is located in the cortex of the kidney and the proximal tubule led to the loop of Henle's. We can see the proximal tubule is led to the loop of Henle's which is the second main part of the renal tubule. This region forms the loop that is located in the renal medulla. So this one is in renal cortex and this one is in renal medulla. The loop has a <coughs> descending limbs and an ascending limb. The ascending loop of the Henle's loop leads to the distal convoluted. So the ascending loop of the Henle's loop led to the Distal convoluted tubule. Distal meaning away since it is located far from the Bowman's capsule as compared to the proximal convoluted tubule. And as we know, the convoluted part extended the length of the tubule. The distal convoluted tubule drains into the collecting tubules. So this is the distal part of the convoluted tubules and this is led to the collecting tubule. We know this one is the collecting tubule. And as we know the convoluted part extended to the length of tubule, the distal convoluted tubule drains into the collecting tubule which also receives inputs from many other nephrons in this region. The collecting duct drains into the large collecting duct and ultimately in the renal <coughs> pelvis which is connected to the ureter and the ureter leads from the kidney to bladder. Distal convoluted tubule also situates at the cortex of the kidney. So we have learned that renal tubule is a large tubule which is convoluted. The first part proximal convoluted tubules situates, situated in the cortex and is loop in the medulla. And the distal convoluted tube is also situated in <coughs> cortex. Along the whole length of the nephron, there runs a network of small blood vessels that called capillaries that brings the impure blood containing many waste metabolic products and takes out the pure blood that is filtered by nephron. The impure blood of the <coughs> arterial blood come into the kidney by renal artery. So this is a generalized structure of the nephron. This is efferent arterial. The blood comes by this arterial. This is efferent arterial. Filter blood go out by this efferent arterial. This is the cluster of blood vessel that is glomerulus. The cup shaped organ of renal corpuscle that is Bowman's capsule. The first convoluted part of renal tubules that is proximal convoluted tubule. The loop is called Henle's loop. The distal convoluted tubules of renal tubules that is nearest to the collecting tubule and the collecting tubule. So this is the whole structure of a uniform tubules 
that constitute of nephron <coughs> and collecting tubules. Now we are going to learn about the function of a nephron. If we see, we can uh, find that the work of the kidney, the main work of kidney is filtration. Filtration of what? Filtration of blood. From from which product? From the metabolic wastes as like nitrosins. So, fine blood come inside by a French arterial. Here we can see it in a red colored dot, which is the nitrogenous product included blood coming into the glomerulus, which is the cluster of blood vessels. And the yellow part is a nitrogenous substance that is filtered. And the green part is a filtered blood which is going out by different arteries. And the yellow part is the nitrogenous product, extra water and extra ion substance which is filtered by the Bowman's capsule. So the red blood is coming with nitrogenous first, green blood is coming out with the filtered blood and the yellow part is containing waste materials nitrogenous waste material, extra water known as urine. No? Hiya, uh, welcome to Biomed Sessions with me, Ruse. Today we're going to be discussing <coughs> glomerular filtration. Here we have our renal corpuscle, which is a structure essential for the filtration of blood in the nephrons of the kidney. One part of the renal corpuscle is the glomerulus, which is basically a network of capillaries. The other part is the surrounding Bowman's capsule. Most capillaries have an arterial end and a venous end. This is not the case here, as blood flows through the glomerulus from the afferent arterial to the efferent arterial, and as this occurs, components of the blood are filtered out. The fluid that enters the capsule is called glomerular filtrate and filtration occurs across an ultrafiltration barrier. A good analogy for the ultrafiltration barrier is a kitchen strainer. Now if you pour a nice herby broth of vegetables into the strainer you will see that large vegetables are left behind whereas water and anything else that dissolves in it plus tiny particles are able to pass through. <coughs> Now, with our glomerulus, molecules less than 1.8 nanometers are freely filtered out, whereas molecules more than 3.6 nanometers are not filtered. Let's take a look at a zoomed-in section of the ultrafiltration barrier. As you can see, there are three layers. Our bottom layer is the endothelium of the capillary, which contains these pores known as fenestrations. This layer basically lets everything through, except for blood cells. Our middle layer is the basement membrane, which prevents the filtration of large proteins. And our outer layer consists of podocytes, part of the Bowman's capsule. These look like monsters wrapping their arms around the layers below, and they themselves have many finger-like projections called pedicels which are so close to each other that there are just narrow filtration slits between them, which allow only small molecules to pass through. One thing to note is that the ultrafiltration barrier is charge selective. As all three layers contain negatively charged glycoproteins, it is difficult for negative molecules to pass through. Hence, serum albumin is not filtered, despite being in the size range. Autofiltration of blood to form glomerular filtrate depends on a balance between the forces that favour filtration and those that oppose it. In general, we can refer to these forces as Starling forces. In order to fully understand glomerular filtration, you need to know about hydrostatic and oncotic pressure, so I'm going to give you a very simplified explanation. Hydrostatic pressure refers to the force a fluid exerts on the walls of its compartment. This would be either the walls of the capillaries or the Bowman's capsule. I like to think of it as pushing, because it is kind of like the way water pushes on the inside of a water balloon as it's being filled up, but in this instance, the fluid can be pushed out. 
Oncotic pressure is pressure exerted by plasma proteins on the walls of the compartment in which they are contained. It kind of has a sponge-like effect, encouraging fluid to be drawn in, therefore I like to think of oncotic pressure as pulling. The major driving force for filtration is the hydrostatic pressure of the glomerulus, which forces fluid out of the capillary. This is opposed by hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman's capsule and the oncotic pressure of glomerular capillary protein. Note, we tend to ignore oncotic pressure of the Bowman's capsule as only tiny amounts of protein are usually present in the glomerular filtrate. Our net filtration pressure, NFP, equals to the pressures favoring filtration minus the pressures opposing filtration, i.e. hydrostatic pressure of the glomerulus minus hydrostatic pressure of the Bowman's capsule minus oncotic pressure of the glomerular capillary <coughs> protein, which is equal to 10 millimeters of mercury. There are many nephrons, and hence there are many renal corpuscles in each kidney. Glomerular filtration rate, GFR for short, is the total amount of filtrate formed by all the renal corpuscles in both kidneys per minute. It can be used as a clue to assess whether an individual has kidney impairment. GFR not only takes into account NFP, but also surface area available for filtration and permeability of glomeruli. So, no. Your today's homework. Today's homework is a label diagram of a nephron. Thank you for today. Stay home. Stay safe.